Welcome back to another sewing tutorial video. Today we'll be learning how to make a dress inspired by the Roland Marais Galaxy dress. We'll be using Vogue 1631 to make this sheaf dress. This dress has a lot of unique features such as darts on the hips and also really cute pleated sleeves. I hope you enjoy making this dress and give it a go. Let's get started. The pattern I'm using today is Vogue V1631 View A, which is a short sleeve sheaf dress. Check out the back of the pattern for the yardage for your size and the width of your fabric. Here's what you'll need to make this dress. This dress requires at least 1.6 meters of stretch wovens, wool crepe or ponte. I'm using a cotton sateen which has a little bit of stretch to help with the fit. The dress is lined through the bodice and the skirt. You'll need at least 2 meters of a lining fabric. I used a cotton poplin. You'll need at least 1.5 meters of interfacing, which will be applied to the bodice. I'm using a light iron-on interfacing, which sticks really well. You need a 56 centimeter invisible zipper and an invisible zipper foot. Matching thread and all the usual sewing supplies such as shears, pins, needles, tailor's chalk, an iron and an ironing board. To mark the darts I'll be using carbon paper and a tracing wheel. An optional extra, I'll be using a washable fabric pen to make those small and accurate markings. This pattern is very fitted, so it's best if you use your bust, waist and hip measurement when choosing your size. In addition to normal sizing, this pattern comes with four different cup sizes. Check out the cup size guide on the pattern instruction sheet. It shows you which pattern piece to use for your cup size. To find your cup size, you need to measure your bust and upper bust. Your bust will be the widest point on your chest. Then move the tape to under your armpits to make the upper bust measurement. The difference between these measurements will be used to determine your cup size. I'm using piece 3 which is for C cup. I know this cup size fits me very well. I made a twill of this dress and learnt the size was too small in the waist and hips. To make view A you'll need to cut out the bodice piece for your cup size and pattern pieces 5, 6, 8 and 9. To cut out the pattern, you'll need to follow the line for your size around the outside of the pattern. You can vary the size of the pattern between the bust, waist and hips by drawing a line in between the sizes. I cut between size 12 at the waist and 14 at the hips for both of the skirt pieces. The skirt pieces for this dress have different cutting lines for the main fabric and the lining. When you cut out the lining, simply fold the pattern along the top cutting line. Please note that I've traced off the bodice and skirt pattern pieces due to having made fitting changes to them. Check out the pattern instructions for the cutting layouts for view A. Choose your cutting layout based on your size and the width of your fabric. My fabric is about 125cm wide, so I'll be using the shorter cutting layout for size 12. Since my fabric is a little wider, I can get away with using a smaller cutting layout. For view A, you need to cut out pattern pieces 5, 6, 8 and 9, and your bodice front piece, which is piece 3 for me. Fold your fabric in half widthwise. I'm going to pin piece 5 next to the selvage. All pieces with a grain line arrow must have this marking placed parallel to the selvage or the fold of the fabric. Use your tape measure to make sure that the distance between the selvage to the arrow is the same down the length of the arrow. Pin the entire piece. Piece 8 needs to be pinned upside down on the fold. To do this we simply place the side of this piece with the rectangle arrow on top of the fold of the fabric. When you go to cut this piece out, make sure you don't cut along the side on top of the fold. Cut these pieces out. As you cut, you'll need to make the notch markings. These are the small triangle markings on the edge of the patterns. Cut a triangle outwards from the pattern piece. Cut 
move the fabric along. Next, place piece 9 next to the selvage and align it with the grain. Pin into place. Pin your bodice front piece on top of the fold next to piece 9. Cut out both of these pieces. Lastly, pin piece 6 in the leftover space and align it with the selvage. Cut this piece out. The bodice and skirt of this dress needs to be lined, so you will need to cut out your bodice front and pieces 5, 8 and 9 in the lining fabric. I'm following the cutting layout for the short width of the fabric and size 14, since my fabric is only 115cm wide. I'm going to fold over the salvage edge of the fabric by just enough space to place piece 8 on top. Use your measuring tape to make sure that the distance from the fold to the salvage is same down the length of the fabric. Pin and cut this piece out on the fold just like with the main fabric. Don't forget to fold up the pattern on the lining cutting line. Move down the selvage and fold over enough space to place piece 5 on top. Make sure that the fold is parallel to the selvage. Pin and cut this piece out. Repeat cutting your bodice front piece on the fold. In the leftover space, I'm going to cut out piece 9. My lining doesn't have a print, so I can simply fold the fabric in half lengthwise to make the two copies. Pin this piece next to the selvage and cut it out. This dress is also interfaced in the bodice to create the structured look. My interfacing is wide, so I can fold it in half widthwise and place both the bodice front and back on top. I pinned the bodice front on the fold. Then I pinned the bodice back in the leftover space next to it. Cut these two pieces out. My interfacing is the type that fuses to the fabric. At the ironing board, I'm going to lay out my bodice pieces with the wrong sides facing up. I then lay the fusible side of the interfacing on top of the fabric. Press your iron down on the fabric on the wool setting to make the interfacing fuse. Do this for both the bodice front and back. Now we can sew the dress up. Before I start sewing, I like to transfer all the dot markings from the pattern pieces onto the fabric with Taylor's chalk. We'll start with the bodice front. On the right side of the fabric, we'll be marking the dot and stitching line at the neckline, the triangle on the shoulder seam, and the dot marking on the armhole. Turn your fabric to the wrong side. Match up the pattern piece with the fabric and pin next to the marking that you want to transfer. Fold the pattern on top of the marking and make the marking on the fabric beside the fold. For the dot marking on the neckline, I'm using an erasable fabric marker to make a very accurate transfer of the marking, since this marking is very important for sewing the neckline. Please keep in mind that erasable pen markings cannot be ironed on or they might stain, so use them sparingly. For all other markings, I'm using Taylor's chalk. To make the markings on the shoulder and armhole, you need to draw a line with your Taylor's chalk from the marking to the raw edge of the pattern. Don't forget to do this for both sides of the bodice. 
On the right side of the fabric, I'm going to transfer the stitching line on the shoulder. I'm drawing this line with Taylor's chalk. On the bodice back, we need to transfer a few markings onto the wrong side. I'm transferring the triangle on the shoulder seam, the dot marking on the armhole, and the square marking on the waist seam. Use Taylor's chalk to do this. Flip the pattern over and transfer the markings onto the other side of the bodice back as well. Once again, I'm going to transfer the stitching line on the shoulder onto the right side of the fabric. The first thing we need to sew for the bodice are the darts and the bodice front piece. I'll be using a tracing wheel and carbon paper to transfer the dart markings from the pattern to the fabric. Open up your carbon paper and lay it on the table with the die side facing up. Place the fabric piece on the table with the right side facing up. Take your pattern piece and pin it to the fabric. Use your tracing wheel to roll along the dart marking for your size. Use a backwards and forwards motion to get a good transfer of the die. On the right side of the fabric, which in this case is the interfacing, we have a perfect line for the dart. Repeat for the other half of the bodice front. Fold your dart in half so that the right sides are together. This dart happens to have corners that you can pin together and will bring the dart legs together, which is really handy. To make sure that you have the lines aligned, you need to stack the dart lines on top of a pin. Pin the dart into place. Start sewing from the wide end of the dart. Sew with a straight stitch on top of the dart line. When you reach near the end of the tip of the dart, sew on top of the fold of the dart for a few stitches. You need to curve your seam slightly inwards to do this. Don't back stitch. Just lift the foot and pull the fabric out of the machine. Cut the thread so that it leaves a long tail on the fabric. Repeat for the other bodice dart. Knot the dart threads together by hand. Trim the dart down to about 1cm seam allowance. Iron the seam allowance split apart. Iron the tip of the dart facing towards the center of the bodice. This creates smooth darts with no bubbles in the bodice. Place your bodice front right side up on the table. Grab your bodice back and place the right sides together on top of the bodice front. Pin these pieces together at the shoulder seam and match the notches. Do this for the other copy of the bodice back pieces as well. Sew the shoulder seams together at 1.5 cm seam allowance. Iron these seams split apart. I'm going to zigzag stitch on top of the raw edge to finish the seam. Change your stitch settings to the zigzag stitch. Sew over the edge of each of the seams individually. I'm going to go through the same steps to sew the bodice lining. This time I'm using white carbon paper which shows up really well against the navy. Use a tracing wheel to make the dart markings on both sides of the bodice front. Pin and sew both of the dart markings on the bodice front lining. Now we'll sew the lining onto the main bodice. We'll be sewing the neckline, which has many corner seams. To make the corner seams easy, I'm going to draw out the seam lines at 1.5 cm. You can sew on top of these lines and get nice crisp corners. Place the bodice on top of the lining with the right sides together. First off, I'm going to match the shoulder seams for the bodice and the lining. Line up the seams that you need to match. Make a marking at 1.5 cm from the raw edge with Taylor's chalk. Fold one layer on top of this marking. Move this layer around until the seams are matching. Pin into place. Sew over the seams at 1.5 cm. If the seams don't match, you can easily unpick them. Check out your perfectly matching seams. 
We'll be sewing the neckline and armhole seam, so you'll need to match the four shoulder seams. Once you're done, pin the entire neckline and armhole for the bodice and the lining. Sew these pieces together with a 1.5cm seam allowance. When you need to turn the corners on the neckline, stick the needle into the fabric and lift the foot to turn. Sew the entire armhole seams again at about 1.4cm to reinforce them. Do this for all the corners of the neckline as well. Trim the seam allowance to about half. Cut small triangles up to the reinforcing seam for the armholes. Be careful not to cut into the reinforcing seam. Cut off all the extra seam allowance at the corners up to the reinforcing seam. Zigzag stitch on top of the seam allowance. Turn the bodice the right side out by pulling the back sections through the bodice front. Open up the armhole seam you made. We'll need to understitch the neckline and armholes to prevent the lining showing through the front of the dress. Understitching is where we sew the seam allowance to the lining side of the seam. Pin the seam allowance towards the lining side. Sew at about half a centimetre away from the main seam. Try to monitor whether you're sewing the seam allowance down and be careful not to catch any other fabric in the seam. Understitch for as far as possible on the armholes and neckline. We're now going to sew the side seams of the bodice and the lining. Bring the side seams together and match the seams for the main fabric and the lining. Pin the rest of the side seam. Sew together with a 1.5cm seam allowance. Iron the seam spread and finish it with a zigzag stitch. We're all ready to add the sleeves. First off, we need to make a few markings on the sleeve. The sleeves have pleat markings. You need to copy these onto the right side of the fabric with Taylor's chalk. The center dot marking is best made on the wrong side of the fabric. This sleeve also needs to be hemmed with a narrow hem on all sides except for the side with the circle markings. This side is attached to the armhole. Back at the ironing board, fold up the raw edge of the sleeves by 1.3cm on all sides except for the one with the circle markings.
Do this for both of the sleeves. I'm going to sew the long side first, so I'm pinning the fold flat. Change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch and use a contrasting thread. Sew directly on top of the fold. This is called a temporary basting stitch. Carefully cut off the excess fabric next to the basting seam you just made. Repeat this process on the short sides of the sleeves too. Now that we've cut off the excess seam allowance, I can roll over the fold on the wrong side of the sleeve by a few millimetres. Do this for all three sides that can be hemmed. Pin into place. Top stitch on top of the hem. Do this for both sleeves. Pick out all the basting threads. You'll now have narrow hemmed sleeves with no raw edges in sight. Moving on to sewing the pleats into the sleeves. These pleats need to be sewn towards the centre of the sleeve. Fold on top of the pleat marking that you made closest to the edge. Move this fold over towards the other pleat marking in the direction of the arrow. Pin the pleat into place. Do this for all the pleats on the sleeves. Sew on top of the fold of the pleat between the two circle markings. Do this for all of the pleats. The sleeves are ready to be sewn into the armhole. These sleeves are a little different. We'll be sewing the raw edge of the sleeve to the already finished armhole. The chalk markings that you previously made on the shoulders show the stitching line for the sleeve, which is 1.5 centimeters. Place the sleeve right sides together on top of the armhole. Line up the marking that you made at the center of the sleeve with the shoulder seam and pin. Place the ends of the sleeve on top of the square markings at the end of the stitching line, or as close as possible. Pin the entire sleeve into place. Sew on top of the sleeve at 1.5 centimeters. Do this for both sleeves. Flip the sleeve so it's sitting the right way out and give it an iron. You need to top stitch on top of the sleeve. Carefully trim the seam allowance on the sleeve to about half. Do not cut into the dress or the finished armhole. The skirt pieces have some markings that we need to make onto the fabric. On the wrong side of the skirt back, you need to copy the square marking at the waist seam and two circle markings at the centre back seam. Do this with Taylor's chalk. This dress has four interesting darts on the front and back of the skirt. This time I'm going to use white carbon paper and a tracing wheel to make these markings onto the wrong side of the fabric. Use the same method as with the bust darts. Lay the die side of the carbon paper on the table and place the wrong side of the fabric on top. Use a tracing wheel to roll over the dart lines. Do this for all four darts on the skirt front and back. Mm -hmm. 
Sew these studs and knot the ends by hand. For the darts on the centre back seam, I would suggest trimming off all the seam allowance at 1.5cm. Any kind of bulk here may prevent the zipper from sliding nicely. As an extra detail, you can top stitch on top of the dart. With a contrasting basting thread, sew on top of the fold of the dart. You must iron the dart before doing this to create a crisp edge. Make sure that you can see these stitches on the right side of the fabric. On the right side of the fabric, we are going to top stitch directly on top of your hand sewn stitches. Start sewing at the raw edge until the tip of the dart. The fold of the dart should be nicely sewn onto the fabric. Do this for all four skirt darts. Once you're done, pull out the tacking threads. Bring the right sides together for both the skirt back pieces. We need to pin between the two dot markings at the centre back seam. Sew at 1.5cm between these two dot markings. We're leaving the top of the skirt open so that we can insert the zipper and the bottom of the skirt open so we can make a split later. Grab your skirt front piece. Place the skirt back that you have sewn so far on top with right sides together. Pin the side edges together. Sew together at 1.5cm for both of the side seams. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch. We are now going to attach the skirt to the bodice that we've sewn so far. Make sure you pull aside the bodice lining. We only want to sew the main fabric pieces together for the seam. I find it easiest to have the skirt the wrong side out and to slip the bodice into it. The bodice must be the right side out so that the right sides are together. Line up the side seams for the skirt and bodice. Base together at 1.5cm to make sure that they will match. Pin the entire waist seam for the bodice and the skirt. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Leave as is until we finish the skirt lining. The lining for the skirt needs to be sewn exactly the same as the main fabric. Copy the darts onto the fabric with carbon paper. Sew the darts and knot the tip by hand. Sew the centre back seam of the skirt between the dot markings. Sew the side seams for the skirt. Take your lining to the dress you've sewn so far. The lining needs to be sewn on top of the wrong side of the skirt. Push the bodice to the inside of the dress. Pull the lining over the top of the main skirt so that the wrong sides are together. Arrange the lining so that the side seams are on top of the same side seams of the main skirt. Pin into place. Please note that we're only going to sew the lining to the skirt between the square markings on the waist seam. This leaves the back seam open so you can sew in the zipper. To sew the lining down, I'm going to sew from the bodice side of the seam with a 1.5cm seam allowance. Start sewing at the chalk marking that you made for the square. Sew on top of the waist seam until you reach the other chalk marking. Carefully cut off the seam allowance for the waist seam to remove bulk. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch. Make sure that you keep the ends of the lining free. We're ready to sew in the zipper. 
We'll be sewing into this dress a long invisible zipper. To do this you'll need an invisible zipper foot which can be attached to your sewing machine. Replace your foot with the invisible zipper foot and make sure that your setting is on the center straight stitch. Open up your zipper. The left side of the zipper needs to be sewn onto the left side of the dress opening. Make sure that the lining is separate from the area we're sewing. Place the zipper tape on the right side of the opening. The side of the zipper with the slider needs to be facing down. Arrange the zipper so it's just below the back neckline. Next, make sure that the zipper teeth is 1.5cm from the raw edge of the opening. Pin the zipper into place. Back at the sewing machine, we'll sew from the top of the zipper to the bottom. Insert the zipper into the machine so that the teeth are underneath the left groove of the foot. As you sew, you need to press down the teeth before it enters the foot. This will help you sew closer to the teeth to get the best look. Finish sewing before you reach the head of the zipper. Zip up the dress. The waist seam and the darts are quite hard to match over the zipper. Here's how I match these seams. Take your dress to the ironing board. Fold up the back raw edge by 1.5cm on the wrong side at the waist seam and darts. Iron into place. Place the fold that you just made on top of the zipper and move it around until the seams match. Pin into place. I like to hand base the seam I want to match on top of the zipper using tacking thread. You only need one strand and a knot at the end. Make a stitch into the fabric. Then we'll make a stitch onto the zipper tape as close as possible to the center of the zipper. Start the next stitch in about the same place as you finish the last stitch on the fabric. Try to make this stitch short and not too deep so that we don't sew into the zipper teeth. Make a stitch into the fabric. Keep doing this until you've hand basted the seams that you want to match, then knot off. You should be able to unzip the dress. The zipper tape will lie flat where you've basted it. Sew over this area with your invisible zipper foot. Zip up the dress and check out the great match. Pull out the basting threads. You can go ahead and pin the rest of the zipper to the right side of the dress opening. Make sure the seam allowance is about 1.5cm and that the lining has been moved aside. I'm going to sew from the top of the zipper, so the zipper teeth need to be under the right hand groove of the foot. Sew the zipper into place. The zipper looks great! To finish off, I'll be hand sewing the opening left between the seam and the end of the zipper. I'll be using a lattice stitch to do this. Always thread your needle with a double strand of thread and not the end. Push the needle into the fabric from the wrong side. We'll make the first stitch into the other side of the opening. Push the needle into the fabric at about the same area as the thread leaves the other side of the opening. Make a stitch length of about half a centimeter. Repeat this stitch on the other side. Keep doing this until you reach the bottom where the zipper is sewn into the fabric. At this point I like to make a few horizontal stitches to help stop the zipper. Push the needle down to the wrong side of the fabric. We'll make a knot on top of the zipper. Create a loop on top of the fabric. Pass the needle through this loop at least three times. Pull the needle and the loop will turn into a knot at the base. At this point you'll need to finish all the raw edges that you have left, including the bottom of the bodice lining and the bottom of the skirt for both the main fabric and the lining. 
and your ironing board, you need to fold up some of the raw edges of the lining. The remaining centre back seam of the skirt lining needs to be folded up by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Iron into place. Do this for all of the unsewn edges of the bodice lining. I am now going to hand sew the lining at the waist seam. We didn't completely sew the skirt lining down, so I am going to pin the rest of the lining to the waist seam. Place the fold that you made for the centre back seam on top of the zipper. You need to place the lining so it's about 5mm from the teeth of the zipper. Pin into place down the length of the zipper. Do this for both sides of the skirt lining. Thread your needle and hide the knot at the waist seam. I'm going to make a few long straight stitches to hold the top of the lining to the waist seam. Make sure that the needle isn't piercing the right side of the dress. You should be sewing just on the waist seam allowance. Now we'll be sewing the skirt lining to the zipper. Use a ladder stitch to sew the fold of the lining to the zipper tape. Make sure to check that your needle can't be seen on the right side of the dress. Sew until you reach the bottom where the zipper is sewn to the dress. Sew the rest of the skirt lining down. We can go ahead and sew the bodice lining down as well. Push the top of the zipper above the stopper in between the lining and the fabric. Pin into place. Place the fold of the lining down onto the zipper at a distance of about 5mm from the zipper teeth. Pin into place. Place the bottom of the lining on top of the waist seam. Make sure that you match the side seams to the skirt and bodice of the lining. Pin the entire bodice lining to the dress. Start sewing at the top of the zipper. Use a ladder stitch to sew the fold of the lining onto the zipper tape, just like with the skirt back. Make sure that you aren't sewing on the right side of the dress. Continue sewing the bottom of the lining to the waist seam. In this case, you can sew below the waist seam and onto the skirt lining. Sew the entire bodice lining down. All that's left now is to hem the dress and sew the split. We'll sew the lining first. On your ironing board, fold up the bottom edge of the lining by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Iron into place. Roll half of the bottom edge away so that you have a nice neat hem. Pin into place. No need to worry about the side seams, you can leave these raw. On your sewing machine, sew on top of the fold of the hem. To make the split for this dress, we need to sew the main fabric and the lining together. We need to bring the right sides together for the fabric and the lining, for the same side of the split. You may need to twist the skirt around slightly to do this. Pin the lining to the skirt. The lining should be slightly shorter. Sew together at 1.5cm. Do this for both sides of the split. When you pull the seam out, you'll have a nice split. The hem for the main fabric is 3.2cm or about 1.25 inch. Fold up the bottom edge of the main fabric by this amount on the wrong side of the fabric. Press with your iron. 
fold under the raw edge of the fabric so that the hem is now 2cm and pin. Make sure that the ends look neat and that the hem is underneath the hem of the lining. I'll be diverging from the instructions here because I want an invisible hem for my dress. And here's how to hand sew an invisible hem. Thread your needle and hide the knot in the seam allowance for the split. Next, run the needle through the fold of the hem for about half a centimetre and pull through. The next stitch is made on the wrong side of the skirt. Pick up a few threads of your fabric with your needle close to the last stitch and pull through. Make the next stitch into the hem of the fabric for about half a centimetre. Repeat these stitches for the entire hem of the skirt. Try to keep your stitching loose for the best look. On the outside of the dress, the hem is almost invisible and looks really neat. Today we learn how to make a galaxy dress. We learn how to make beautiful darts, how to make a vent at the bottom of the skirt, and how to also make really cute pleated sleeves. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something. This dress is really beautiful and has a lovely design. It will flatter almost everyone. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. See you next time.